Okay, so I'm really excited for this video where I'm taking a design that a community member uh, supplied. You can see it on the screen right now. And we're taking this design and we're gonna code it up and we're gonna be doing a lot of cool things with it. We're gonna be pushing the edge, trying some bleeding edge technologies to sort of show you how they're going to be changing web development now. And we're gonna be doing it to make it fully responsive. So this layout that I have is just a, um, we have just the desktop design, but I wanna show you how we can do mobile first, even though we're starting with a desktop design. You can see that here we have the, the layout growing, it's switching over, we have a few different things. We have this fun little animation on the button that we're gonna do in. Um, and then as it gets bigger like that, the layout sort of switches over and then eventually locks in at this maximum size like that. And we have the overlapping content, lots of really cool things with the sort of like asymmetrical style um, of this design. So we're really gonna be pushing the box, we're gonna be using subgrid, uh, we're gonna be using CSS custom properties, clamp, a few other things. You can see here like the, the, the main title grows and shrinks in size, but it has a minimum size and it also goes up to a maximum size. Lots of really cool and fun things we're going to be doing in this one. Don't talk to me about browser support. This video is not being put together for production. It's not being put together for browser support. It's being put together to show you how easy a layout like this is going to be in the not too distant future. So much fun, lots of really cool things that we're gonna be looking at. I'm really looking forward to jumping into it, so let's go. So before we get into this video, I just wanna say a really big thank you to Moritz. He is a community member on my Discord. He had designed this and was asking for feedback on it and someone said, wouldn't it be cool to see Kevin code that up because it looks pretty interesting and I thought it does look pretty interesting, so let's see how we can do it. So a really big thank you to Moritz. I have linked to his Instagram down below, so make sure to give him a follow over on Instagram and yeah, let's go and get started on this. So what do we need? Well, the very first thing I'm gonna do is you can see I have the design here in uh, XD open, which is what it was designed in. And what I want to do is keep it really simple at first. Um, and actually we can keep the markup, like the HTML here, really, really basic. So I all I started with here is a blank HTML file and I am in VS code. So what I'm gonna do is exclamation point and push tab. And that is Emmet just filling everything out for me. So I don't have to do anything else. Here we'll just call it the box because that's sort of what this is. We have TB as the logo, so I'm guessing that is also the um, the the logo there is TB the box, and we can get started. Cool. So in the body here, what I want to do is bring in a div class called main grid, and the reason I'm doing this is because I am going to be using subgrid. If I was not using subgrid, maybe I wouldn't do this. Um, and main grid, could you just do this on the body itself? Could we make that? That's how I started. I originally, when I was using grid, was just always putting it on the body. Um, but I found a few edge cases where I was running into issues with that. So I prefer doing something like this now. Now inside my main grid, I'm going to have three main parts. We're going to have our header. We're going to have my main and we're going to have a footer. And so that's the main look of it. And those are all gonna be placed on my main grid. So I am gonna be using grid to lay something out for those. Uh, but the nice thing is because I can use subgrid now, and this will only be supported in Firefox because I am using subgrid, but I can use that same grid for the children that are inside these. With normal grid, you couldn't do that. So you're gonna see how easy and how fantastic that does make things. So inside here in my header, uh, we just need a couple of things. We need an image because I did bring that in as a SVG and I'll bring that in in a second. Uh, so, and then we need our class here and I'm just gonna call it logo. And the alt of this, um, generally it should be a description of what it is. So TB is not really gonna tell people much. Uh, logo won't really tell people much. It could be the name of the company. So like company name could be here. So maybe we could just put the box. Um, and next we need my navigation. So nav and just I'm using Emmet, as I said, so if I hit tab, that's what I've been doing up until now to speed things up a little bit. Uh, my nav, I am going to give this a class of nav as well, just because I like giving everything classes. <laughs> I could do this on my header, my main, and my footer as well, actually. Um, but here we have my nav. So on the nav itself, um, we could do this with an unordered list and do it that way. So um, I'm going to speed things up a little bit just be <laughs> and do it the lazy way, which is just putting uh, links directly in here. So we need four links. I'm going to do an A with a class of nav link and I'm going to do star four, hit tab. They're not going to have anywhere to go to, so we'll just you know, do something like that. Um, 
I'm not going to put in the text right now. We can come back and do all the text after I'll bring my image in and do all of that in one shot. We're just worried about, you know, how things are looking right now or getting our markup all in place. So that should be it for my header. Then we can come in to my main here. And what do we need in my main? Uh, inside my main, we need our title, subtitle type of thing here, a paragraph, a button, and my image. So what I'm going to do is here have an h1 with a class of title. I think that makes sense. <laughs> We're gonna have a paragraph with a class of location, I guess, location. Then I'm gonna come in with an image, IMG, with a class of primary image. We're also gonna come in here and have a, and I guess I can make this a little bit bigger just so while we're working on it, you can see a little bit more. Uh, so we have my primary image. Then um, for the two images down here, because they stay grouped together, what I am going to do is give those a div. So I'm going to do a, a div with a class of secondary imi images. I'm going to put image here too. I'm going to write it out. Uh, so secondary images. And then inside of that, we can have image with a class of secondary image, singular, because it's the, the individual ones. <laughs> and hit tab. Oh, uh, actually, before we do that, we want to do a star two, star two times two, and then we can, uh, whoops, that probably worked. Two, and I think Emmett puts everything on one line there, which drives me a little nuts. But there we go. We have my two images that have come in. So that will be my two images down here at the bottom. So that's, oh, and we need a button. I was going to say that's all the content we need, uh, but we can come in here with a button with a class of BTN for button and that should be okay. Uh, I am making it a button. I'm assuming this would be sort of, I don't know what, if, is that going to another page? In which case it could be a link. Is it pulling something up? Um, I'm imagining some sort of JavaScript functionality that could be cool. So I am using a button, but it could also be um, not a button. And we could have that as a link if it was just going to another page. Cool. Um, and then all that's left for our markup is here in the footer. Um, I'm going to give these a div don't doesn't necessarily need it, but I like doing that because I'm imagining that maybe later on they'd want to add more stuff to the footer. So what would happen if they wanted to add the name again or a copyright or some other information? Uh, it would just make my life a lot easier. So here we can do social links. Um, and then inside of my social links, we have three of them. So a with a class of we can just do social link. Yeah, that would work, except we want three of them. So star three. And in this case, actually, we want to have a image inside each one of them. And the image can be social image, just like that. Now, one thing I am definitely going to do here, um, and maybe I'll come back to this a little bit when I style the footer a little bit. But on each one of these, I am going to place a area label. Um, which is going to go with the social icon. So the first one could be Snapchat. Uh, Airbnb and Instagram. And so the reason I'm putting an area label is these are links. These are things that people can click on, but if there's no text in there, if somebody's on a screen reader or there's some other type of, um, you know, something that's reading the page, they don't know what that link is unless the person can see the, the actual image. So putting an area label on there just helps the screen reader know when it gets to the link, it can read the image out and it knows what the image actually is. So somebody can decide if they want to click on that or not. So area label on there. And just like that, our HTML is all done. That's all we need. <laughs> um, we will need one or two other things, but I think just one. So I'm going to come here and make a new folder inside called CSS. And oh, just before, uh, you can see I have a get attributes in there. This will be up on GitHub. So if you want to get the finished code for this, you can check the description below and there will be a link to the finished version of it down there if you want to check it out. Uh, so here in my CSS folder, I will make a styles.css. And I can come back to my index and we want to link that. So we can just do link CSS styles.css. And there we go, a bit easier to see with it like that. So there we go, my link going to my CSS file right there. And with all that, I think we're done with my HTML. Um, before I do that, I'm just gonna cut ahead as I'm gonna bring all the text in that we need for everything in here. And then I'll see you on the other side when we start writing our CSS and all of the text is in place. 
All right, so here we go. We are ready to go. Uh, one thing I did realize when I was bringing in all my text is I'd actually forgot to put this description in here. And so I brought it in and you'll notice I have my title first, my location, which is right there, my big image, my two little images. And then I have my description after that, even though here you would think like maybe there's a different order you might want to do. Uh, maybe the description would be with the text, you know, wh whatever it would be, many people wouldn't be putting it after this. Um, but there is a good reason that I'm doing it that way. And it's, I want to start this design mobile first. And I always want to think about how, and it's not even mobile first, actually, at this stage, it's like, what happens if there's no CSS? So I am in Firefox here. So I'm going to do a control shift M to open responsive mode and just shrink this down a little bit. I realize my image is overflowing. It's really big, but I like this idea of having my main image first, then the two secondary images and the description. And I'm going to make this even split into two columns probably because they're really secondary uh, images and then we'll get our description down there. So let's jump over to my CSS file right here. And a couple things, or well, the first thing I always do is set up my box sizing. So uh, star, we're going to be using some pseudo elements in here. So before and my star after and box sizing border box. If you do not know about, if you do, if you do not know about border box, I do have a video on that. There should be a card popping up there right now. Uh, definitely a must have at the beginning of any project. Um, the next thing I am going to do, well, it's just hit save on that. It won't really change too much. Uh, I will just come and say image max width 100% because that's going to fix a big problem that we were having. Um, and before that, um, I think what I want to do is come in and um, I'm going to set up my custom properties. And so I'm going to do my root selector and custom property this away. So we're going to do my, I only have them from the colors. There's one font that's used throughout all of this. So and just to explain a little bit of what my colors are, let's bring uh, the design back up. And so the colors we have my, you can see them here, the social icons, my background color, so the really dark color. I have my image box, so th that's this color. That's my BG light. Um, even though it's a dark color, it's lighter version. Um, and my accent is that orange color that we can see right there. And actually, we can see we, can see, we have little boxes there that are showing them to you, so you can probably figure that out. Um, okay, so let's get started on the more interesting stuff. So I will come onto my body. Now, normally on the body, we're used to doing a margin of zero, but I'm actually gonna do a margin of one M to increase it a little bit, just because I want to just keep stuff off the sides. Uh, we're gonna be getting rid of that on the big screens. Uh, we can set our background color to my var BG dark right there. And obviously the color will be my var color text. Super duper, cool. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is just set a line height on this because I pretty much always set line heights on things uh, to get rid of the default, which is always way too tight. So we'll go with a 1.5. Um, my font is way off. And for now, I'm not gonna worry too much about the font, but I will do a font family of just uh, sans serif for now. And we'll figure that out and see if we wanna change that as we go. That's, you know, and actually before we do anything else, I just want you to look at this and go, you know what, it's not, fantastic looking, but on a mobile phone, like, okay, sure. <laughs> it works, right? It's a functional layout right now. Um, I do like having the margin of one M it's a little tight without that. And I have, I still, I, I come to sites all the time these days that have a margin of zero and I'm reading like a big block of text and it's stuck to the side and it's really hard to read. Um, it looks like, uh, do I need to side scroll? Not really. It's awkward on mobile designs, make sure you have some breathing room. It doesn't have to be like this that you're creating it, but make sure there's some space around your stuff, please. Um, the next thing we want to do is come in and I guess we can just start doing some typography stuff. So my main title, we're gonna do something fun for the title here. So first, I guess we should set the color though. So color will be my var color accent. Whoops, not icons, accent. Uh, one thing I really love with custom properties now is that it's, they're sort of integrated into VS Code here is you don't even have to know what color you want. Like as soon as I do my custom property, CLR, I get the list of all the colors I want. If I was using this for font weight, FW, I just have my list of font weights. So nice. So in this case, color, choose my color accent, and I can just keep going. Um, what I want to do, uh, actually, we need a text transform of uppercase on this one. 
And I guess, well, let's bring in my design here for a second. Um, I'm just gonna move it down a little bit. I wanna be able to see what we're doing. There we go. Um, so we need an uppercase there, I think that's okay. And the next thing I wanna do is obviously play with the, um, actually, I'm gonna put a margin, the font size on this is gonna get big. You can already see there's these big spaces around that. So we can do a margin of zero right away. Uh, so if I come in with the font size, we're gonna do the fun part right now, which is with clamp. And what do I wanna do? Clamp is setting a minimum, an ideal, and a maximum. So the minimum is the size, I, the smallest I want it to get to. So uh, let's try three rem. I'm just gonna do a clamp with three rem and actually let's just set three rem and see what that looks like. So I think that's a pretty good size at like a small screen size. I think that's looking good as a minimum. So clamp three rem. Um, I want it to grow pretty fast and you can play with this. We'll try 10 VW and then we'll, and then we'll set a maximum of 10 and see what this is gonna do. So it means it's small screen sizes, we are at three, but then as this grows, we hit a point where um, it's the 10 VW is bigger than three, so it's gonna start growing. And it's gonna start growing, it's gonna start growing, and then we're gonna need this a bit bigger, I think. I don't know if we're gonna reach our 10. That's getting really big, actually. Okay, let's make this a little bit smaller. We'll try seven. And I think we have a maximum now. Like, there you go, you can see, so here. We have our small size, it starts growing, it hits a maximum, and it will never grow bigger than seven. So, so, so nice. <laughs> I love that so much. Okay, so that's looking pretty good for the title. Uh, we can come down on our location. We'll scroll up a little there just to make it easier for you. And on there, we want our color is going to be a lot darker. So var color, I think it's the icon color actually. Uh, once again, I guess we need to have, all, no, we don't have all caps on that one. We'll put a margin of zero on that as well. And a font size, font size. What should we do as our font size? Um, I think I'm just gonna go with like a two rem. Maybe that's a little big. Let's shrink that down. I lost my, my side scrolling. I wanna, okay, there we go. <laughs> And there, okay, so I think it's a little bit big, especially when you compare it to the design here. So maybe a 1.5 would actually be better. And notice how there's still a lot of space that's coming on these. I think what it is is actually, um, my, uh, it's just gonna be on the title. I think we want a line height on here, height of one. I think, there we go. That will bring it down. If ever you have a really big font, um, and you know, I, I boosted the default line height to 1.5, so that's gonna create more spacing. Um, by default, so maybe we'll have to play with margins and stuff, but we'll we'll get back to that in a second. Or I said in a second, why don't we do our navigation just to actually make that all work a little bit better. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is do my header is going to be a display of flex. So they actually go next to each other like that. Uh, my nav link is going to be color of var color. I think it's the text, right? Let's bring this up. Uh, did I not call those nav link? Oh, under, silly. I was using BEM, but it's like the only place I did. There we go. Um, we can do a text transform of capitalize, which I don't use very often, but that looks like, oh, it wasn't even capitalized really. Whatever, we'll stick with that. Text declaration of none. Um, I used the display of flex here, but you can see it doesn't look perfectly centered. So I was trying to line items center, super duper. And we will, um, I'm gonna just select my nav here. And I wanna check something. So let's give this a outline of one or two pixels solid red, just so we can see it. All right, and so I want, I use display flex. And when you do that, things shrink down to like they're as small as they can possibly be. So I have my logo, I have that. And then I have this empty space left over here. Um, I actually want this to fill up that entire space. So I think the easiest way is just on the nav to give that a width of 100% and it's going to grow. Um, or even, you know, I mean, the more, I guess the official way would be a flex grow and just enable flex grow. I guess that's more of the proper way to do it. So we'll go with that. Both of them would have the same effect and would work just as well. Um, so the advantage with doing that is I can do a display of flex here now 
and then I can do a justify content space. Usually I use space between, um, but I sort of want to create this artificial gap on those sides. So I'm wondering if space around here, it's not a ton of space, but you know, if we get rid of this, this here, um, it's better than nothing. I think they're going to collapse into each other a bit. It's not perfect at super small screens. Let's just, <laughs> um, but as we get to the bigger screens, it's going to get better. Um, and then it's going to switch over at one point to a bit of a different layout anyway. And here on my header, I think what we'll just do, um, I'm going to give this a little bit of margin top and bottom. So margin 2M0. There we go. And it starts to breathe a little bit more like that. Cool. Um, I do guess we can give the location here a margin bottom of, I don't know, 2M. 1.5M just to balance things out a little bit. So we get the title there uh, coming down and then we get in, run into our images. Uh, what I will do for those images, which is secondary images, display of flex on that. So remember that was the parent. So by doing it on the parent, they go and smush next to each other and they'll shrink down a little bit. And I am doing this with cutting edge technology. So instead of doing anything else, I'm just gonna do a gap that's probably a bit big, 0.5M. M. There we go. We got to spell it right, and we get a gap in between. So that works the same as grid gap. Uh, it's coming to Flex. It's there in Firefox. Um, browser support is coming, I think, but it's not everywhere yet. I think actually Chrome just added it. I think it's on the way for Chrome. It's in. I think it's on the way for Chrome. It hit Canary or something like that. So hopefully we're seeing it soon. And for the mobile layout, you can, and this is why I like organizing my markup in the most logical way possible. Like I'm thinking of them, I'm looking at this because I need to focus on that. But I'm also thinking about like, how is this just going to work without me having to make any layout decisions um, early on? And it's, I think, the most logical reading sequence. It's all about reading sequence when you're doing your markup. Um, and one of the things I love about these new tools we have with grid, subgrid that's coming, like I can do this and then easily achieve this layout without having to go crazy. So that's super, super exciting. Um, so I guess we just really need to focus on our buttons and I, we can do a little bit, uh, the button there and we can do a little bit more. Now I will come up <laughs> for my button and I'm going to do it over here after my image. I guess, I mean, it, Ideally, it would be something that could be reused anywhere on any page and some of this stuff is a bit more specific even though, you know, I could say the same for a lot of this. <laughs> this, you know, this is really a one-off project. So sort of ignore my um, organization and my CSS, I guess. Uh, so for my button, now this button is a little bit interesting, um, but I think the easiest way to get that like orange bar thing underneath is to use a pseudo element. Maybe I'm wrong on that, but I think it is the easiest thing to do. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is cursor pointer because it's a button and it sucks when they don't have that. Uh, we can give that a border of zero. We're just pretty much resetting a lot of the defaults that it has. Background will become transparent. Um, and let's give it a color. Color var color text. And then, because it should be white, let's hit save. Okay, it's coming in. Uh, font size 1.125 rem. I want it to be a little bit bigger because it does look bigger than the text here a little bit. Uh, I guess we should give it a little bit of padding. Padding can be like a 0.5M. It doesn't need a lot, but I think a little bit will go a long way. Uh, with that, I'm going to do a display inline block just in case someone were to place this on a link. So if it wasn't on a button, but you're using this class on a link, that would become really, really important. And I'm going to move that up just because that's how I like to organize my buttons. And I think that's okay for that. Um, I'm just going to go down for now. We have my header. I'll just do it here. Footer uh, margin top of like 2M just to give me some space there because that was bugging me. And we'll come back to my button. And uh, we want to get that orange bar. So I think what I'm going to do is use a pseudo element, pseudo element, element button, <laughs> pseudo element after. And I want to do, uh, so I need my content on here. And if you're not too familiar with pseudo elements, I do have a three part series that really deep dives into how to use them and how, um, yeah, I think they're one of the most underused parts of CSS that are absolutely amazing. So uh, definitely check it out. And maybe I overuse them because I think that, but you know, um, yeah, I'm still going to suggest doing it.
Um, so with that, I'm going to do a position of absolute. And if I'm doing position absolute here, I definitely want to come up to here and do a position of relative on that, uh, which we shouldn't see any changes yet. We can give this a background of our color accent. And now the fun begins. We want to position it. So let's just give it a height of 1M. See what that gives us. I think it's going to be too high. A width of 100%. Left of 0. OK, a Z index of negative 1 to push it back. OK, we're getting there. Uh, I think the height of it is actually OK. We just want to move it down. So top could be 50%. OK, and obviously the width is too big. So let's shrink that width down 60% little too short 70 five okay good I was just looking it's in the O I wanted to try and get it in the O um, and actually that looks a little bit like that maybe the height is a little bit I just scrolled away and I don't know why uh, maybe the height is a little bit much so we can do like a point seven five maybe even bigger eight five M that looks a little bit more like it's cutting in the B. I'm not even zooming in, but I'm just saying like roughly what it looks like there. So I think that looks a bit better. Now, the fun part, I want to make this a little bit more interesting when we hover on top of it. So let's do a button uh, hover. So one, one colon hover after, and it's going to change. And what are we going to do? So when we hover, and actually we, we do this for our focus state too. So the same thing, uh, button focus after I should have done that from I didn't even make a hover for these guys yet um, so what are we going to do let's just try a transform of scale and we're just going to scale it up scale 1.5 and so when we go on top it gets bigger except it's not going the way I want so what I'm going to do here is my transform origin will be bottom left and now it should grow that way. Cool. So that's looking all right. I think we should add in transition on my transform of 250 milliseconds. Okay, it looks a little better. We're gonna modify that a bit. I want to come up with a better animation. But see how here it looks okay. And when I go there, it's like way too long. It's kind of ugly. Um, I'm actually gonna do two on here. Let's try. I might have to make this bigger. So let's try a two. Let's just see. I'm looking at the height right now. Maybe it's a little bit too much. 1.9 for the height. I'm only worried about the height. So it's looking pretty good, but obviously it's getting way too long when I do that. So what I want is to do two, and this one can be like a 1.3. So this is stretching the height up and down, and this is going to do the left and the right pretty much. Oh, did I mix that up? I mixed that up. 1.3 and 1.9. There we go. So that looks a little better. Um, so this is actually going to go up to a 1.4. And that's going to get switched over to a 3.5. <laughs> there we go. And maybe even this could be a 1.85 or something. There we go. I think that looks a little bit better. And I want to make a better animation there. Um, and one thing that I'm not very good at. So uh, if we do bring up our um, tools here, I'm going to go on my little inspector. Um, I'm going to inspect right on that button. And you can see that we should see button let's go find my after and I can see my transition oh I never put the okay here let's just do a ease the only reason I'm doing that I, I could have done that in the dev tool actually whoops uh, inspector let's find my button again after we have the ease so I can click on that and I can create a curve now so I want something that's gonna sort of go slow and then go really fast I want it to bounce um, I know you can't, can you, if I move this up, can you see more of that? Because it's coming off screen. I can't move it all onto my screen, sadly. I think you can see most of it, though. There's a little bar that's bouncing back and forth at the bottom, um, sort of showing me what the animation looks like. So it's going to sort of start slow and then go really fast, but then it's going to do a big bump right at the end um, and then come backwards even a little bit. So let's try that out. And how do you try it out? Well, then you can just come here and copy the cubic bezier that it made and get rid of that and replace my ease with my cubic bezier and that's stuck on there we go aha there we go nice little like bouncing animation 
Um, and maybe I could even speed this up to like a 175. So it's like this really drastic, like boom, boom, boom. And if I hit tab, it should still work. I can alt tab or shift tab off, tab, shift tab. There we go. Cool, cool, awesome. Um, I think the last thing I really wanna do right now is just down here. Um, my, actually, I put my footer here with my header, but I'm just gonna sort of keep a logical sequence here, I think would make more sense. Um, and here my social, social link. I think each, each individual one, uh, opacity of like a 0.5. Uh, yeah, so hover social link focus. So then just to give us a nice little something like that, I could do something up here too. Um, or maybe we're here nav link. We didn't do it. So my nav link hover and my nav link focus color. In this case, let's just switch the color to my, uh, my nice accent color there. And there we go. It's working there. And then if we tab through or we come through, I think that's looking okay. Now I realize the mobile navigation is not the best, but mobile navigations, if you're doing like a hamburger menu, it's a long time. This is already shaping up to be a really long video. So I think <laughs> we're going to leave it just like that for now. Um, there's a few different ways, I guess we could tackle that. Um, actually, yeah, I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> I'm not going to kill myself. Um, <clears throat> It is bugging me, but anyway, uh, I do want to push forward with this video and focus more on the layout and getting it to look like this. So this is where the real fun begins. Um, let's zoom in a little bit. And hmm, how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? So we have to decide when the layout's going to start changing is one of those things. And don't just go 768 because that's what Bootstrap uses. Um, I tend to look at where things are causing issues. My lines are getting really long. Like here, this is getting really, really long. I'm at about 800 pixels, so I'm going with 800. If you want seven um, at media, if you want a 768, because it's 768, it's not gonna change anything. Min width, 800 pixels. And what do we wanna do? Hmm. Well, the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna start pushing more toward this layout. You can see I don't have a space here, like the image is glued to the side of the page. So that means that here my margin, uh, margin my body's margin should become zero and so that means we should see it right away here we have a margin and then my margin disappears and everything is now glued to the side the next thing I want to do is create my grid so you remember I had my main grid where we're going to create a grid that we're going to be using and um, one thing I, I do want to do is actually split this up into multiple columns. So when I'm looking at this, I'm actually seeing, um, I'm trying to think actually, I'm sort of seeing like one column for here, one column for where this is all overlapping a little bit, maybe all the way up to here. Not even I'm seeing, yeah, like one column for the text, like this here is in one column. This, this is even like two columns, probably. I'm just thinking like I can break this up into three really easily. So I'm going to do a like a pretty much a three column layout. That's what I'm trying to say. So the easiest way for me to do that, and I like doing, um, so main grid is going to have a display of grid, obviously. So display grid. And then we're going to do a grid template columns. And I'm going to split this up on multiple rows um, or multiple lines of in here, just so it's easier to read. And I always like starting with a min max of one M comma one FR. I don't use this all the time, um, but I do like using that for my outermost ones. And these don't even count towards that three column grid that I said I wanted. That's going to come here where I'm going to do a repeat of three and we'll throw another min max in here. I'm going to try 10 RAM, 30 RAM and uh, 10 it's 160 each um, and then this is three times bigger than that so I'm just letting them grow these numbers are sort of pulled out of a hat at this point uh, but we'll try it out and see what happens so obviously everything broke because everything fell onto my grid but let's open my dev tools up again and I can now turn on my main grid and we can look at what that looks like so here I should be able to stretch this out a bit 
Um, here we have the 1M, 1FR. Here we have the 10, another one, another one. And then this one here is this last little guy all the way at the end. Now, obviously we need to get start placing things a little prop, a little bit better than what we have right now because um, we do have a bit of an issue. I'm also gonna come in and give this a gap of, I don't know, we'll try 2M and if we have to modify it from there we will, but it's just gonna create some spaces for our content to live in. Um, so let's start placing stuff on my grid. So the first thing we have is my header and we'll do header grid column of three over five. That's all the way down here. And that sort of broke everything. Anyway, let's keep going and see what ends up happening. Ooh, I just realized something. I'm gonna have to do a two over five and we're gonna play with that a little bit. Okay, so header is there. Then we're gonna have my main, which is going to have the grid column of two over negative one because I want it to go from and actually let me just turn off my responsive mode here whoops and I just realized I didn't have that open the whole time we can stretch this down a little bit you see in my desktop and if <laughs> OBS running there that's how I'm recording um so by doing the two over negative one it's just going to bring us all the way to, like from one edge of the browser over to the other edge and then my footer I guess uh <laughs> since we're doing sort of all the big pieces first. So footer can go grid column. I'm two, so from here to here, I think it can, yeah, it's gonna live like in this space right there. So it should just move over. There we go, it's over there. I should have spaced those out. Well, we'll come back to that. Okay, so that's starting a little bit. <laughs> we've, we've gotten a little bit of things working. Um, but where I really want to change my layout now and start pushing, it's not going to go all the way there yet, but we want to start pushing it toward this idea of having all the text on this side and my image on that side um, and this gray box and stuff. So <clears throat> the easiest way to do that is actually here on my main. And remember the main is has the box, the rich main, the big picture, the two little pictures and all of this, the button and this text here. So all of that is in there. And what I wanna do now is I wanna give this a display of grid, but instead of giving this a regular grid template columns, what I wanna do is say sub grid. And what that does is now you can see everything. Let's undo that for a second. Everything is living inside this one big box pretty much. We have everything that's in here. And as soon as I do that, instead of living in that big box, it's now breaking into the columns. Like even this image is squeezing into here. So the it's now using the grid columns of the parent. And that's cool. We can still use all the line numbers. We can use everything. It's super, super cool. Except the line numbers might be different. Uh, let's, they probably will be actually. Uh, my subgrid will be that one. And I'm turning this one on so I can make sure, because like now my number one is here, whereas the old number one was here and like this was two. So the line numbers might be a little different, but we're using the same grid, which is really, really cool. I don't have to do anything. I have to define one grid and that's it. Um, I love this so much. <laughs> so what can we do now? I'm gonna leave all that because that's my, no, let's just come here, whatever. I said I was gonna group it like that, but um, we might as well bring, no, let's position things a little <laughs> first. Um, so where's my title gonna go? My title is going to go from grid column I want it to stay here, but I want it to go all the way to here. So we can do a one over three. And again, I'm just looking at these numbers. One, two, three, save. It goes from one to three. We have extra room if we need it. Um, not finished with everything I need on there, but we might as well come into my primary image. <coughs> um, and my primary image should be the grid column of two over four. Two over, let's just do negative one. I want it to go all the way to the end. So there we go, we're starting at two and we're going all the way to here. The only problem is they're not overlapping each other because they don't, things won't overlap in grid unless you tell them they have to. So grid row of one and grid row of one, and now they overlap. Image z index negative one, and we can push it back. We don't have to do display, we're in grid. It's amazing. <laughs> we don't have to mess around with other stuff. Um, I'm also going to say grid row one over three, maybe. 
Maybe it's even a four because I need that to push down more. I need like multiple things to be able to live over on this side. Let's maybe even do a four on that. I think that's more what we want. <clears throat> um my secondary images and this is where why i love grid it takes a little while to set grid up but then once you start doing your layout everything just starts falling into place um sometimes it's a little annoying you do lose your grid when the page refreshes so let's turn that back on uh, i want that to go from two to four i guess so secondary images grid column two actually two over three maybe even hmm what if I did a four on that? Does that, well, that's weird. Okay, <laughs> we'll stick with that and we'll try and figure out what happened. I know these are overflowing. Anyway, we'll figure that out in a second. <laughs> um, my location's okay. I'm gonna be really, let's just come here and say location and my description, just a description, uh, grid column, one over two. That's gonna pull that there. What I need to do, so we have one, two, three. Um, I don't know if this is gonna fix it, but I'm gonna do a, gr a grid auto flow of dense. Ah, I did, okay. So uh, just, if you're not too familiar, let's turn that off. Um, I had that empty cell. Whoops, wrong one. Let's turn that back on. So we have this empty cell right here because it's what's happening is it's going like in my original markup. It's looking at the HTML. So it's going, we have, first we have the, this, then we have my location, we have my image. Um, but then, you know, it's going after that. So this is just empty now because we're going after my image. I have these and then after these. So then it's, this is the next like available cell. So it's going here. We do have these empty cells, but it's going, okay, like after this, I'm flowing down and that's where it's going. Um, but by switching it to dense, it means if there's empty stuff available, it's allowed to squeeze up into it. So that does help out right there and fix things. And it also somehow fixed this too. So I'm not sure what happened there. Um, secondary images, I will actually, I'm not going to put this in the media query because I think I can just put this on my button and it won't cause any issues the rest of the time. Um, is I'm just going to give this a, a line self start and a justify whoops and a justify self start so it shouldn't shrink like see how there before it was stretching the whole way across um it's just going to make sure that it stays its own size and nothing weird happens cool um that's looking okay i, I sort of like this going all the way across because if it was just in like a little space i think it would be way too tight um so i'm going to leave it like that for the moment. Secondary images, margin top, I think was pretty big. Let's just go back to the design. Yeah, we had like a big gap there. I know this has like an arrow that looks like it's gonna go to other ones. We're not gonna do that. Um, we have the big number one. I mean, the layout is more or less there, right? We're, we're getting close. We're not all the way there, but we're getting mighty, mighty close. Uh, footer. Social links, same thing I did before. Display, this is for my navigation, display flex and a gap of like 2M just to space them out. Super. <laughs> I love the gap so much, such a cool property. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is bring in my pseudo element now. So that was on my main. I'm gonna do my main after. It doesn't have to be on the main. I could do this as a pseudo element anywhere really. Uh, so content is gonna be nothing. Um, and we're gonna give this a position of absolute. And so we can see it, let's just give it a background color to start, background color of var color. This is my BG light uh, that I hadn't used yet. Um, and now the fun part is, let's just give this a top of zero, bottom of zero, left of zero, right of zero. And of course I don't see it anywhere. Uh, so let's see where this, is main oh i gave this a class when i don't have a class there we go that's what i thought it would cover the entire page that's what i was expecting um so now that it's covered the entire page what i can do and this is the real fun part 
is my main grid. Let's make this uh, position a uh, relic. Pull, you gotta spell it right, position. And you can see it changed a little bit, but nothing too exciting has happened yet. But now what I can do is I can actually position that on the grid. So I can say grid uh, column two, and uh, just two over three, I guess. And see, there we go. And so I guess I should have done it three over four. Ha, perfect. And then we can just Z index that to the back. Index negative one. Oh, we should do a negative 10. My image had a negative one on it, so we'll just go another layer back. Um, and that's kind of cool. There we go. I think what I am going to do is increase that a little bit. And I think at this screen size, actually, what I'm going to do is make that a little bit bigger. Um, because, and I think even for these guys, that was my secondary images, eh? Let's do over something like that. I'd just make them a little bigger. They were kind of sad with how small they were. Um, what I don't like is the way this box is, the gray box here is touching there. So here on my left and the right, I think what I'll just do is negative one M. I, I only need it there on the left just to pull it over. We could do the negative two M. Um, it's going to match. I, I'll do that. It is matching the design. I don't love that this is touching and the reason the 2M here is working properly or perfectly is it's matching the gap that I had on the main grid. So it's going to fill in that space exactly. Um, and actually let's fix our navigation up a little too. Um, my header, we're going to do the same thing. Uh, display of grid, grid template columns, subgrid, and then my nav can live in the grid column of three over five, which should fill up two over five. There we go. Okay. So it's filling up from one side of the gray box to the other pretty much. So cool, cool. Let's see how that's, um, actually let's find out what's uh, spilling out the side. I'm just gonna go all the way to here. Uh, outline, two pixels, solid red. Nothing is spilling out the side? Refresh. No idea. <laughs> Don't know what that was about but it seems to have fixed itself. So be happy about that. Okay, so I think that's actually looking really good. It's not exactly for the design, but the way I'm seeing this right now is if, I'm, I'm, oh, we have a bit of an issue there. We'll fix that in a second. Um, at small screen sizes, we're good. We have our mobile layout, everything is looking okay. And then we start getting to a bigger size and maybe we could break that a little earlier, but at one point, boom, we want it to break and go over to a layout more like this. Now I didn't want this to be the gray box to be too small. So I left it like that and it's going to grow like that. But at one point, probably around here, we're at like 1200 pixels. We're getting pretty big there. We're going to be able to break into a different layout now and match more of what the original design was all about. So let's come down and create a new media query. And this one won't have as much in it. New media, uh, min width of um, we said we were around 1200 pixels, so we'll go with that. And really, I don't think we need much in here. Um, I'm just going to have the nav, the main after. I want them to shrink down. So they're going to go from the grid column of three over five to a grid column of three over four. And this shouldn't have a dot on it. <coughs> three over four. Oh, that's not working with my nav. Okay. So we'll just do that. We'll start with that. So now we're matching more of what that original design um, was looking like a little bit. We have a few things here. My image is getting a bit too big, I think. So we're going to fix that uh, in a minute, but I sort of like how that's breaking. So uh, what I want actually here is then my nav and my secondary images are going to go into a grid column. I guess it's two over three. It's a little bit tight. What do you think? Oh, remember when I did that left of, and I didn't do it on the other side. I think we're going to have to, right? Cause now it looks weird that it's stuck there. Yeah. So let's just come up. That was on left and the right can be a negative two M as well. 
and I don't think that it caused any side scrolling at smaller screens. Yeah, we're fine. Cool. So we have that and then we get to the bigger screen size and it's looking pretty good. And actually it's a little bit tight right there, but that extra space I think is actually making it work a little bit better. Um, now the big issue is my image is getting a little bit out of control, obviously. Um, so one way we can fix that is we're going to want to come up and change my, just trying to think where we should put this on my image. So I get, I mean, let's come into our media query here because this is where the problem starts. We have our nav, my main, my title, location, primary image. We have some primary image here, so we might as well stick with what we have here. Um, I'm going to give it a height of 100% because I want to always keep that height, but I'm also going to give it a max height of, let's just say 500 pixels. So it can never be taller than 500 pixels. Now it's going to cause a bit of an issue um, as my screen gets in the side there. I think that looks good. When I go to here, I don't like that all of a sudden it's not touching the side anymore. So one way I can do that is say that the width is always 100%, no matter what. The only problem with that is that means it's going to stretch my image to make it fit. So you can see there it's all okay, but then when it needs to, that image, ugh, not so good. Um, so what we can do for that, and even here you can see it's actually smushing my image a little bit that way too. So it's not working either way. Uh, so I'm going to do an object fit on this of cover. And that treats it more like a background where it's actually going to crop away the image instead of stretching it um, or playing with it. So here we're good. We get to here. That's good. It's still working. That snaps over, but it's still working. It never sort of gets too big. Um, we just have this issue where everything's sort of stretched out right now. And I think um, what we could do is here on the main. Um, we have my dense. The other thing, columns, I want to do grid. Is it template rows? I think I want my auto rows to be min content, which means be as small as possible. And there we go. That sort of fixes that. Now my height on my image is maybe a little muck now. So we might have to give that a minimum height as well. Um, you know what I think? I, uh, this is a bit of a silly solution, but um, right now I'm, I'm just noticing that my image is stopping before it's getting to the button. And I sort of want to increase this down just a bit more. So I think where I have my primary image um, and say I have one over four, I can just make that a five. So, or I can do like a span four on that. Um, so it's spanning one, two, three, four pieces on that side. So I think that's a little bit more clear. It sort of stops it from being too tiny. Um, and I think that more or less fixes that issue. Um, I do think that it's getting kind of weird at really big screen sizes. So one other option here too is on the primary image. I said a width, but maybe what we could do here is choose a minimum. So which one is smaller out of these two between 100% or 1000 pixels. 1000 might be a bit big. I don't know if I can get there. My screen, if it was on my full screen, <laughs> I definitely could. Um, oh no, there we go. So you can see that it's going like that. So it's which value is smaller out of those two, 100% width or a thousand pixels. So now the image is less than a thousand pixels big, but then it gets to a thousand pixels and it stops growing. Um, so it sort of stops too much of the image from disappearing. I guess we could also set a minimum height on there um, as well, instead of like I have a max height. Um, I don't know what the height on that is. What if I just said the height? I'm just scared it's gonna start pushing things apart here again. Uh, 500 pixels. Like it's going to cause a little bit more spacing if I do something like that for sure. I don't like locking. I mean, it's a, hmm. I sort of like that better to be honest. Um, hmm. In one way I could fix that is actually to put all of these in one box um, instead of having them all separated. But I think what I'm going to do, or what if the height no, I'm going to do what I had before. I'm going to say height like that, and we're just going to leave it. So I think that'll work. Yeah, I think that'll work fine. And it, that means just if the content here got really long um, or we're getting like really smushed down, the image won't stretch to like too tall to fit. That's sort of why I want a max height on it is to stop it from becoming this super tall image. Um, but I think that's working out pretty good. Maybe we could tweak that a little bit. 
Hey there, future Kevin here. And when I was editing the video, I realized I didn't quite like how it was looking on big screens. I think this encapsulated really well um, the overall layout where we had this big image and then we had the text on the side. But when I got to the larger screens and I was watching it, um, I don't know, I just wasn't as happy with how small this gray thing was. I felt like it should be bigger according to the design. And overall, I wasn't super, super happy with it. Um, so what I think a really quick fix would be um, is just here instead of having all three columns the same would be to have two columns that are the same and maybe a little bit bigger. So say we do like a 15 and 35 type thing. And then we have another one over here, min max. Um, this one won't be quite as big though. So maybe like a five RAM over 10 RAM or something like that. We can always adjust that. And I think what that's going to do is just give us Everything here gets a little bit more room, which I feel like, you know, the original design I feel was more within line like that, where we had a bit more room for this and this space over here was a little bit smaller. So a bit more of that asymmetrical look to it um, that was really cool about it. And then the other thing is this font didn't quite get as big as what I should have let it do. And we'd set that up so it could get big. And I said, oh, it's getting too big. And I think I was wrong. Um, so here on the title, maybe something like 10 would have actually been a bit more appropriate, maybe even a bit bigger. Um, like say a 12 or something like that. So it would allow it to actually get to that really big size as we break into the bigger font sizes. And I think that captures a little bit more of the feeling of it. Uh, so just like that, uh, just a couple of little tweaks there um, that I do think make a big improvement and get us a little bit closer to the original spirit of the design. I am really happy with that. I hope you are happy with that too. I hope you learned a couple of things along the way with that. It was a lot of fun to put together and I really find these new tools for creating layouts are just super, super exciting. So I really hope you enjoyed that. You learned a few things along the way. If you did and you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, please do consider subscribing. And if you'd like to help this channel out, there's a few different ways you could do it. So if you're getting a lot of value and you do want to help me out, there's a bunch of different ways you could do it. You could just let other people know about it. That's probably the best way to do it, just to spread the word and let other people know that you enjoy the content that's here and you think it would help them out too. Um, other ways you can do it, you can buy a t-shirt. I have them just down below. So there's t-shirts, hoodies, a few other things. Uh, you could definitely go and buy one of my courses. I have one on Scrimba right now, so that could be a good thing. It's a 15 hour, really big, long class on CSS. We do Flexbox Grid and tons of other stuff. Or you could also become my patron over on Patreon. And speaking of Patreon, thank you very much to all my current patrons. You guys are amazing. I really, really appreciate your continued support. You guys really help everything keep going here. So thank you very, very much. I think that's the end. I think we covered everything I wanted to say. So thank you so much for watching. And until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.